Hi, I'm Vic and welcome to Geeko Farm where we do things differently Well it looks like the zombie preparedness needs a little bit more work so I'm going to get more proactive against vampires and uh, pop in a little bit more uh, garlic That's the garlic taken care of. Now let's go and have a look in the gr Excuse me a moment. What with winter coming on in this neck of the woods, it's getting kind of damp and it's getting kind of dark early. So we need to do two things. First of all is we need a waterproof camera because that fancy one there uh, is not terribly waterproof. So we're going to have to resort to the GoPro. Unfortunately, the GoPro does not easily fit on that tripod that's down there. Well, uh, I have some other bits. This is a part which uh, is actually on Thingiverse, and I'll put a, a link in the text below, uh, which fits on my phone um, like that. Um, and then allows me to uh, put it in a tripod and use it as a tripod mounted camera. Now, I have a spare one of these which fit my previous camera. Uh, I just sort of like melt the bar in the back and squish them together until they're the right size. Just use a cigarette lighter. And I could just print that part out and make a new one uh, on my 3D printer, but like I've got this and here is a self-adhesive GoPro sticker um, and once I've stuck that to there, I can stick my GoPro on it. So let's whip this off with a hacksaw and stick it on. We'll just um, key this up a bit with a coarse file. There we go, so that the uh, adhesive sticks properly. Oh, another 3D printed thing by the way, file handle. Always use a file handle, otherwise you shove the spike into the palm of your hand when this catches or digs into something. Yeah, I'll put a link to that in uh, the text below as well. The GoPro thing has a sticky adhesive patch on here. I'll just peel that off. And then making sure everything's aligned in the right direction. We'll just stick that on there. There we go. And now we'll try it out on the tripod. Of course, that's going to be tricky to film, isn't it? And we slip that little sucker in there, like that. That's the uh, mount for the GoPro sorted out. Now I can concentrate on the real work and fix up some uh, new lighting for the greenhouse. Oh, Excuse me. Time to sort out the lighting in the greenhouse then. Uh, let's have a look at the first one. It's already one light in here, uh, just wired up to the ceiling with some cable ties and that's just got an ordinary uh, switch on the wall. As you can see all the plants in the greenhouse are doing really well, we're going to call that massive kale there, it's trying to take over all the runs, Caligula. Yeah, I'm going. Then of course there's the uh, PIR light, I'm going to need a few bits for that. Fortunately in the leftover parts from building the greenhouse, I found these little stainless brackets, which look like this, and with a bit of enthusiasm can be altered to look like this. And that'll do for mounting the light. There are also a lot of handy little stainless uh, nuts and bolts, which uh, are cunningly shaped to fit in the slots in the greenhouse, so we'll use those too. The light we're going to use for this project is a little 10 watt LED panel thing with a built-in PIR detector, so it lights up automatically. Uh, the manual says it comes with a fitted lead, which is bollocks because there's not even room in the box for one. So we need a lead. And it turns out that it's cheaper to buy an extension cord than it is to buy a plug and a bunch of lead. So that's what we're going to go with. But some modifications are required. Let's get down to it. 
there's a hole in the back with a rubber washer in there that's where our cable's going to go in and there are screws holding the waterproof enclosure on and I know how much you love seeing me undo screws so uh, I've undone the other four let's just uh, take this apart a second and there you go right so now we need to connect mains up to it that requires killing the lead so we'll just take the end off this with an obscenely large pair of cable cutters always pleasing when you cut the right end off um, and then we've got to strip this back uh, we can strip them all to the same length okay I don't like doing that on camera because I want to pay my full attention to uh, doing it so you don't nick the wires down at the base there which uh, can cause shorts and other ugliness so let's chop the ends off and make sure we don't throw the bits inside the electrical equipment you remember to thread the cable through the back of the unit little tip for you um, stainless steel screws aren't very magnetic um, so if you'll stick to your screwdriver like these don't uh, then they're probably not a very good stainless steel anyway here it is all finished and I've got a plug so mm, let's plug it in see what happens and why yes time to use these little uh, t-shaped screws they slot in there like that and then twist sideways like that there we go and then hang those bits on go add nuts to them nuts to the lot of them yeah. now we can take this thing plonk that up there ah, swivel that round there and yeah I think you can probably see uh, where the next bolt's gonna go hello dog what the hell here we go all done safely with a ladder and everything add some ties and clamps and stuff later on Meanwhile, we just poke that through there and plug it in on the other side. I'll cut the picture of that light working properly in later. Look, see? Works. Hallelujah. Anyway, that's... that's you're kidding! More of them? Right. Sort this out. Right. Out of bullets. Need something bigger. More bullets. Ah. But for now, that's your lot. <laughs> 